this is what we would call an offset smoker. So here's our baby back ribs for today. Oh. That's only for jalapenos. Oh, okay. No, but seriously, is que vous imaginez ça? You ready? Oh yeah. Salut les gars, aujourd'hui on est à Lucas au Texas avec mon pote Marc, l'ours que vous voyez ici, qui est... Bon, on, on fera jamais rien de mieux. Là je vous le dis tout de suite, vous avez vu le titre de la vidéo, on va parler de barbecue, mais vraiment Marc, je pense qu'on ne pourra pas trouver mieux. Après ça, plus personne ne pourra plus jamais parler de barbecue, c'est impossible. Marc c'est un chef barbecue, c'est vraiment un spécialiste, il a... Un ah bah oui, comme vous le voyez, d'une taille monstrueuse. Et en fait, qu'est-ce qu'il fait Il a une boîte. Tout simplement, les gens lui commandent de la nourriture. Vous avez un grand repas de famille, etc. Les gens lui commandent du barbecue et lui, il en fait en grosse quantité. Ça va être incroyable, mais comme je vous le dis, c'est le level maximum. Moi, c'est mon mentor en termes de barbecue. C'est-à-dire, quand vous voyez des réels que je fais, le machin, c'est lui qui me guide vraiment pour m'aider. Vraiment, Marc, thank you really much. We're really happy to be here. I just say to people that you're my master about barbecue. You tell me everything, all to do everything. So... Man, we're really exciting. All I gotta say is, welcome to Texas, y'all. <laughs> What are we gonna do today? Well, today we're gonna show you the holy trinity. We got Texas-style brisket, ribs, and we're gonna do some pulled pork. And I know you, big man, that likes to eat some good stuff, so we have some tomahawk steaks for you, baby. Oh, yeah. Donc ça, vous avez entendu le programme, enfin, vous avez lu le programme. Ça va être incroyable. J'ai vraiment, vraiment hâte. I'm so excited, man. It's like, yeah. it's time. It's gonna, be, yeah. it's gonna be a beef party today, yeah. man. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Can you explain, like, maybe for French people who don't know exactly which work, like, just not speaking, like, specifically about your smoker, but All this kind of smokers work. Awesome. Yes, this is what we would call an offset smoker. Mm -hmm. uh, we use wood uh, and we light it on fire in here, inside this firebox. The only way it can go is through the tube. The smoke then passes through the tube where the, all the meat are on grates and then out the exhaust. The exhaust sucks it out, so then it creates this fast flowing air. This is like a convection oven. So not only does the heat flavor the meat but how fast the smoke going past it will flavor oui, the meat. Il n'y a pas de feu sous la viande. C'est pas comme un barbecue normal ou un grill. Là, c'est vraiment la fumée qui cuit, qui cuit le, le barbecue. Donc, ce qui est important, comme il dit, et ça, y a, même les gens qui connaissent l'offset smoker ne sont pas forcément attentifs à ça, c'est la vitesse à laquelle la fumée passe et justement ne stagne pas. I throw it. Yep. Perfect. See, you can work for me now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now uh, you work for me <laughs> you know it so I do this every 20 minutes we put two pieces on this was completely full vous imaginez la quantité de bois qu'ils utilisent c'est incroyable so everything will be totally gone at the end of the day probably tout ça là ça sera cramé à la fin de la journée the meat cooks here you see mm -hmm. and then we also have another area for the meat to cook but then underneath it we still have all this negative space Mm -hmm. Again, fast moving air. Oh, and so it's all about the way the hair is moving. I agree. Deep fryer, 12 oh. gallons. Friteuse, ça super. Whole turkeys, two turkeys can go in here at a time. On peut mettre deux dents entières dedans. I make uh, here uh, propane burners. Okay, so, so you can boil. Or... So here I do seafood boils, beans. And so you got the grill too. Yeah, so then here, this is my favorite thing to play with. So we, once we get all the meat on the smoker, it takes many hours to cook, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm bored. I want to eat steaks or I want to eat chicken or sometimes vegetables, but not very often. <laughs> not very often. Jalapeno is vegetable. <laughs> yeah, there we go. That's my vegetable, jalapeno. <laughs> so, Mark, here is a full brisket, right? Correct. La poitrine de bœuf, c'est le brisket qui est vraiment 
un des plats les plus traditionnels au Texas. That's a much traditional barbecue stuff. Yes. In Texas. Donc c'est comme en France, hein, c'est une partie tout simple que on va utiliser comme en France on va utiliser les parties ce qu'on appelle euh, trucs à fondu, etc. Euh, le collier, tout, tout ce genre de parties que nous on va utiliser pour faire du pot au feu, etc. Qu'est-ce qu'ils vont faire Ils vont faire du brisket avec, c'est-à-dire ils vont le passer en fumage longue durée. We're done with this, but now we need to rub it. We need to put our seasoning on it because it's salt, pepper, and smoke that make the magic. Oh, okay. Okay? So let's make our rub. Donc maintenant, Marc va nous montrer l'assaisonnement. So that's you, you made your own seasoning, right? Yes. You don't buy one no, old crap. There are many seasons that are great, mm -hmm. but I, like, I consistently want to do it myself. Okay, okay. It's not the same seasoning you do for brisket ribs and everything. Did you... This is just for brisket and that's pork butt. A, okay. So I actually put in a little bit more pepper than I do salt. After salt and pepper, the next things that are important are garlic powder and onion powder. A lot of people will use a lot of chili powder. I don't like chili powder. I okay. think it's too aggressive. It's too, too spicy. in your face. Okay. It, you need things to balance and complement. You want to taste the beef if you're eating beef. Mm -hmm. You don't want to taste the chili powder. Okay. So that goes in here. And the secret that I don't have out here with me right now is I actually put in a little brown sugar as well. All becomes this beautiful singular color instead of being... Mm. Just by looking at it, I can tell already right now the pepper is very strong. It'll yeah. be good. Yeah, we smell it. It's some hot pepper yeah. really, really hard. All right. Yeah. It's way more sweetie. But then everything else is mal balance. Yeah, with the pepper, it's really... Mm. See, it's nice, huh? It's really tasty, yeah. I'm gonna send some home with you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna send some home with you. Ah, uh, yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, <laughs> yeah, so... Perfect. Now, just take some of your rub, and you can store this and it'll be just fine, right? But we'll just take some, <coughs> we'll put in this. Watch out, there's pepper. Yeah. Yeah. We'll just put this in here, and then watch. Let's go, let's go rub the brisket now. I use a special treat, mustard. The classic yellow mustard. I hate I mustard. don't know why you call it French. Cause oh, this is especially for you. So especially for you. I'll tell you something was really like, this mustard, the French is, in, in France, we call it American mustard. Because <laughs> they're absolutely not French and that doesn't taste like anything in France. Well, in mustard is not yellow. In America? <laughs> like in France, there is no yellow mustard. I know. <laughs> but I got to tell you, in America, France, French is the best type of food. So I know, I know. That's why we put it on here. So it's I the know, best, right? I know, they put it on everything. <laughs> but it's not. You have to know. So my secret is, I don't even like mustard. Okay. So you're like, why would you put this on your brisket? Just to get the rub stick. Yeah, you can't it. taste it. You won't ever see it again. All I want to do is make this stick to this. Okay. And now, he's ready. We go to the smoker. You like? I really like it. How, how much time we will go on a smoker? Um, eight, ten, twelve hours. Depends on how angry she is. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So here's our baby back ribs for today. Wow. Donc là, vous avez les ribs et il va les asperger. What is inside? So we have apple cider vinegar and a mixture with apple juice. Jus de pomme et euh, vinaigre de cidre. So they dry out a little bit. You got to keep them happy <laughs> and make sure they sparkle and shine. These two, we're about to sweet treat for you. So just, oh. a, just a little, just a little. <laughs> just a little? <laughs> just a little. <laughs> so we do this maybe every 30 minutes, maybe every hour. Okay. And that way. Oh, okay. So you keep it really wet. Wet and moist and flavor. Okay. And layers and layers of flavor. Mm. Okay. You ready? Yeah. We can normally just have a savory rib if we wanted to. So that's what we start with. Mm -hmm. And as an option, 
Most of the people around here that like to eat, they like it to have a, a sweet layer as well. Okay. So this is optional. You don't have to do this every time. Yeah. But this is what a lot of people like around here. Okay. And it makes it real pretty. Okay. We call okay. it a sweet glaze. Okay, donc là, ce qu'on va faire, c'est on va faire un truc que les gens adorent ici avec les ribs, c'est-à-dire de, de mettre une... Euh, euh, donc, ce qu'ils appellent le glaze, c'est-à-dire une sorte de glaçage dessus, euh, sucré, donc ils font eux-mêmes, et donc ils sont à base de sauce barbecue, etc., de différentes épices, euh, tout ça. Et donc, euh, c'est pas obligatoire, hein, c'est ce qu'il dit, on peut aimer, en fait, euh, avec ou sans le, le glaçage. Donc là, dans, dans 30 minutes à peu près, c'est fini, parce que ça, c'est la finition. Mais ça fait 6 heures qu'ils sont dans le fumoir. OK, now we cook more. Yeah. So, sir, now it's time. We're going to take the, the pork butt off and we're going to let it uh, sit over here. How we so finish it. So, it's not a pork shoulder. It's pork shoulder. It's pork shoulder, OK. So, we prepared this like we would a brisket. OK. Very little trimming. And it sits for, you know, this whole thing will cook in like 10 hours. For now, I've got a special treat for it. We can't just let it finish like this. We cooked it Central Texas style. And now we're going to finish it in a Georgia style with a liquid bath. Oh. So I've got special treats for it. What liquid will we gonna use? Well, I like it's to true. use apple juice. Yeah. So apple juice is the main thing that we make sure we incorporate in it. And I actually cut this with a little bit of water this time. But this helps. And then we'll full tint this. And then, you know, it's got to be special, right? You want a hint what makes mine special? <laughs> I know you're did, receiving. Did you hear it? <laughs> yeah. Did you hear it? You know, people ask me, like, what beer do you use for this? Whatever one's cold. Whatever one I <laughs> the get beer, my hands on. The beer you order. Whatever one I get my hands on. I think that's had enough, though, right? Good, because I need some. <laughs> that's why you chose the beer you want. The brand, beer brand you want. <laughs> oh, all right. Back on the smoker we go. These are one of my favorite things. We're super famous for these. I, I really tasted it last time. It's crazy. Isn't it's these amazing? They take des gros piments. Ils les rôtissent et ils les mettent dans l'eau glacée et en fait ça enlève le côté piquant un petit peu et ça garde la saveur pour pouvoir avoir des gros piments comme ça, un peu comme des poivrons finalement. But what we do is we cut the top off mm -hmm. and then we cut it and we get all the seeds out and all the pulp and everything that's inside and then we fill it with cream cheese and my brisket. Mm. And then wrap with bacon, salt and pepper, smoke it. And then when it's crispy and beautiful, then we put the sweet glaze on it. Vous imaginez ça Non mais sérieusement. Est-ce que vous imaginez ça Je peux vous garantir que moi j'ai déjà goûté ça, c'est juste incroyable. My wife says this satisfies her more than I do. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> All right, let's let's put it in the smoker. Bon, mon moment préféré, vous savez, c'est enfin de goûter parce que depuis ce matin, c'est this morning we're cooking, but I want to try now. I want to eat. It's time to eat, right? <laughs> c'est le moment de goûter. J'ai déjà goûté ça. I already test this kind of ribs last time. Je vous jure, et, et croyez-moi, j'en ai goûté des ribs dans ma vie. C'est les meilleurs ribs que j'ai goûté de toute ma vie. That's the fucking best ribs I ever test all my life. And I guarantee you it's true. I'm not saying that because you're here. That's true. C'est... Incroyable. I'm strong and I'm a badass. I'm just gonna eat mine. Is that okay? You want to watch me eat? Is that good? Go fuck you. <laughs> you, you gotta have it now, right? <laughs> you explained me last time that the, the meat doesn't have to get out of the bones, right? No, it's, then it's overcooked, it's overcooked. and ruined. Quand la, vous savez, souvent on dit, ouais, le l'os, il se détache tout seul, etc. En fait, quand vous fumez, ce qu'il m'expliquait, c'est que pour lui, si la viande se détache tout seul de l'os, c'est que c'est trop cuit. Ce qu'il faut, c'est qu'elle soit euh, super euh, savoureuse, super tendre, etc., qu'on puisse l'enlever toute seule, mais qu'elle tienne quand vous tenez l'os. Et... <rire> oh, I got you, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so when you take a bite, you want to have your, your teeth marks in it. And you don't want the whole thing to pop off. So hopefully, we cook this right. 
And if we didn't, we'll find out real quick. Mmm. Oh my god. Vraiment les gars. Je sais pas comment vous dire, parce que vous pourrez certainement jamais. Si vous venez un jour au Texas, venez, vraiment. D'ailleurs, j'en profite pour vous le dire maintenant. Abonnez-vous à l'Instagram de Marc, c'est Sharing My Meat. Ça s'affiche à l'écran, ça s'affiche en description. Allez-y vraiment. Il poste des trucs comme ça tous les jours. Il me disait qu'il n'était pas sûr que ça puisse intéresser les Français quand je lui ai proposé de faire la vidéo. Montrez-lui que vous êtes intéressé par la bonne viande et que on sait ce que c'est aussi en France. Allez-y, abonnez-vous massivement vraiment parce que vous n'allez pas le regretter. Oh, oh man. Mm. That's damn good. Yeah, that's damn good. <laughs> It's like I can't eat the whole thing. It's like... You know what? I got a surprise for you. Mm -hmm. This is all for you. You know how to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you like my meat. This is what it's got to be. I got to share it with you. Share my meat. Yeah, you're right. Maintenant, c'est le moment de tester what we are testing now. This is pulled pork. Le, le pork. So, you can tell it's a, it's a real firm meat, right? Oh, yeah. So, it has to be cooked like that. Like, it really... Yeah. So this is this is how we pull. Oops, run away. Donc le pull pork c'est vraiment une spécialité. What would, your, voilà. what would your cameraman do if we just kind of like threw it at him? <laughs> no, no, you, don't is it okay? Don't throw it. Okay. C'est vraiment une spécialité. Donc voilà, il faut que le porc soit ce qu'on appelle un effiloché de porc chez nous. Donc il faut qu'il soit vraiment cuit à la perfection au smoker pour que ça devienne comme ça et que la, la texture soit voilà s'en aille. C'est pas comme les ribs où il faut qu'ils se tiennent. Là au contraire, il faut que ça s'effiloche tout seul. Here's a special tip that I do. Why just do something normal when you can do something exceptional? <laughs> yeah. Correct? Correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit, just touch more of my rub. Okay. And we're going to add on just a little bit more again. And then, since this did come from the East Coast, you know, South Carolina, we made a South Carolina vinegar style rub, or uh, sauce. And because it's not a cow, we're going to put a little sauce on it. Because cows don't need sauce. Okay. The pigs, you see. Okay. You know. So what is on it? It's like vinegar? Yeah, it's vinegar. Uh, uh, it's a secret. This is actually... It's secret sauce. This is actually my only secret. Okay, okay. This we'll, might be my main secret. We'll not, we're it's taking too long. I don't even tell my mom this. She's over there. She wants to know. I don't tell her. <laughs> if I don't tell her, how can I tell you? No. no, no. All right. Definitely not. All right. C'est incroyable, c'est vraiment bon. C'est super bon. Oh. Mm. Ah, c'est incroyable. Mm. Alors, ce que j'aime vraiment, c'est que c'est pas archi mariné, etc. Là, on a un vrai goût de viande et en même temps, la texture est parfaite, l'assaisonnement est parfait. What I, what I say is, what I like, it's not much marinade, much seasoning, you know, you test meat, but it's cooked perfectly, perfect seasoning, everything on it. It's yeah. Like... Oh, <laughs> God. Mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. That's definitely food porn. Mm. This is God's gift directly to us. <laughs> this is how we know God loves us. We don't say it's a black gold of Texas. Oh, well, you can say whatever you want to. I don't care as long as you don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> so this right here. And so one, 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 the only thing that we did not have time to show you today was that at a certain point in the cook, once we have the outside looking exactly how we like it, and for us, it's a long time. Yeah, you wrap it. And then we wrap it in this butcher paper to protect it and keep all the liquid fat from dripping away mm. and staying with it. Okay. Wow. But, so to me... Oh, it smells. Like, terribly, you gotta smell. To me, this is what... Incroyable odor qui, qui arrive dès qu'ils enlèvent le papier, c'est fou. You put your fingers along, and it'll be about a pencil width edge. And then you come down, and then move down again. So... You hear it slice brisket and not chop it. Well, in North Texas, chopped brisket is how everybody would eat it. But now the craft scene of barbecue, you slice it because you can show how much better you are. So look, it bends. Yeah. But then at the same time, you can pull it apart. Okay. And that shows you the perfect slice. When you slice all the way down, 
you'd stop to about right here, okay? And at this point, we're gonna switch the board sideways. By the way, let's look at this. This is the this is the money shot. Je vais euh, intervenir vite fait pour euh, un truc. Je dis avant, Jean-Kevin Barbecue, ne commente pas, n'explique pas que c'est trop cuit, bla 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 bla, que c'est pas comme tu aurais fait. Là, ça ressemble, quand vous voyez la couleur, à de la viande cuite, mais ce n'est pas de la viande grillée, c'est de la viande fumée. Ça a passé 14 heures au fumoir, la texture n'a rien à voir, le goût n'a rien à voir. C'est censé avoir cette couleur, ça ne peut pas être rouge. Le brisket, ça a cette couleur et je vous assure qu'en bouche, c'est excellent et ça n'a pas du tout le goût de la viande trop cuite. Donc je le dis parce qu'à chaque fois que j'en poste sur Instagram, chaque fois que je monte des trucs fumés, j'ai toujours un canard qui dit « Ah non, moi, euh, elle est juste trop cuite, ta viande, elle est brûlée. » Non, non, non. There's your bite. Oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Put all your mouth. Put all my meat in your mouth. I'm so excited. That's incredible. The goût is incredible. Il y a une espèce de goût caramélisé qui est, qui est fou. And this one's even better. Oh, là, c'est... Careful, mommy. Je même pas. Je sais pas quoi dire, de toute façon, hein, c'est une dégustation. À chaque fois, je vais vous dire c'est bon, c'est bon. Et c'est... C'est excellent, c'est excellent. <rire> vous vous rappelez tout à l'heure quand il nous parlait de remplir les, les piments avec euh, le, le, le fromage frais et le brisket, etc. With this sweet glaze. glaze. Mm. And then, it's a secret recipe. And too. this is... Uh, I, people try to get this and put it on their barbecue and I tell them it's too sweet and it's only for jalapenos. Oh, okay. And, uh, but then they take it from me and they still put on their barbecue, they're crazy. <laughs> but uh, that right there is one of the best bites there is in the world. You can, your choice, either one of those. those are well, great. it looks like hot as It <laughs> does look a little warm. Um, man, it does it look a little warm? Yeah, yeah, it looks We it should probably, I should probably be very careful with that. It's hot. It's <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna wait. <laughs> very good, it's all good. Yeah, I'm a pussy, I'm gonna wait. <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to burn my throat. Mm. You like at this distance, you really smell the pizza. Yeah, you got the smells coming you, you through. Pizza. Yeah, the habanero, really warm. Going after this. Careful now. Mm. Mm. <laughs> More uh, than happy. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have to try to understand the expression. <laughs> <laughs>
ending this video is like, why do you do that? Like, why do you, did push you to do that job? Like this way, you can't open a restaurant or something. Why do you do this way? When I was young, five years old, my father moved, we moved from a different city in, in Houston to up here. And we owned this little bitty tiny bait shop near the lake. And so then we start, I start selling minnows as a child to people. And minnows? Then, minnows? Minnows, fish? yeah, yeah to, okay. to, go by, to go fishing. Yeah, yeah. And then my father leased out the front part for a guy to put a barbecue stand there. I love the way it smelled, love the way it tasted. But the best part about it for me was that the look on people's faces and how happy they were when they got it. Mm. And how yeah, anybody could talk to each other while they're, while they're eating the barbecue or waiting in line for the barbecue. And it, it became a thing to me of like, this is one of the things that brings people together, kind of like cigars. And now I travel the whole world. I live in Greece. I, I backpack across Europe. I've been to 80 countries, live in different places. And then 20, 30 years later, same place. I'm opening, I'm putting my spot in the same exact spot that five-year-old Mark sat outside and watched people buy barbecue from. That's a so, good story. It's a fun story. And, uh, but I, we can't see, I can't see, because I know you, like, not, not from a long time, but I say I know you, I'm talking a lot with you, and I saw, I saw the satisfaction you got when people say they love your food. Or, you, you really like Making it. people happy is just is one of the best things for me. And I'll also say the pursuit of doing something well is a reward in itself too. So as you try hard to improve yourself and to have better methods and better results, even if they're just tiny, that's moving forward. And that's what it's about for oh, me. Oh yeah. You know, we say God got a plan for everyone. You saying God decided that you have to do that. That's what he planned for you? I think so. That's really good. Thank you really much, Mark. Thank you really much, buddy. Really appreciate the moment. Thank you, really. sir. Les gars, j'espère vraiment que vous avez aimé cette vidéo. Et comme j'ai dit, là, je pense qu'on a plié le game du barbecue. Écrivez à Marc sur Instagram. Vous pouvez lui poser les questions. They can ask you questions on Instagram, right? Of course, but I'm going to answer in English. Yeah, yeah, in English. <laughs> oui, oui, uh, posez-lui en anglais, vous utilisez Google Traduction. N'hésitez pas. Pour tous les autres, je vous dis à dans deux semaines.